How we doing? All good. New week. Good to watch the tape. Guys played well. Um, good to get a lot of the young guys in and uh, watch them improve. And so on to the uh, Fresno State Bulldogs. And um, yeah, excited for the next, the next challenge. What stood out on tape? Um, just a lot of guys played well. That's really what it was. I mean, it was clean in all three phases. I mean, if you check the kind of critical stats, they weren't able to run the ball and they didn't hit a lot of explosives and we got our turnovers and pressured the quarterback. And, you know, on offense, it was pretty, pretty effective except for the one turnover that really obviously was a big one that hurt us, that gave him points. But, and, uh, you know, special teams, you can not talk about Dante's punt return, but just some other stuff. There were some good learning, learning opportunities, both kickoff return, kickoff, you know, our field goal protection was soft, obviously. And that's why that got blocked. So we'll get all those things cleaned up and hopefully continue to progress. It's Rutgers that there were some things that maybe the other team did that caught you guys a little bit off guard in terms of having to make adjustments. Did you kind of see what you expected to see from Montana? Yeah, and, and, and the thing about Rutgers, I mean, they didn't do anything that caught us off guard other than slowed the game way down. And, and then the other thing that caught us off guard is we didn't execute on offense. So the combination of the two, and you have the ball 32 plays in the first half, and you're not really in rhythm, that catches you off guard. It's like we need the ball, we need to get some things going. That was probably the biggest thing in that game, to just stay on the field, to get into a rhythm. Um, I mean, every team has some wrinkles that you haven't seen, certainly early early in the season. And as you go on, there's so much tape, you can't even, you, you can't defend at all when you get late. So you're always gonna see things that you haven't totally, totally prepared for. And that's where you just gotta play assignment sound football on both sides of the ball. Um, so, um, you know, there was a couple things that we knew that we wouldn't quite know about, but the guys reacted good and recovered and made plays. You talked about the punt receive unit as a whole. I mean, Dante's been getting a lot of credit for the two yeah. punt returns. But what do you like about the way that personnel is set up in your punt receive team? What are some of the other parts of that mechanically that, that you've that you've? Really well, I mean, it's just guys playing hard. That's what it comes down to, just winning your one-on-one -on -one battles. I mean, football comes down to that, just winning your one-on-one -on -one battles. And, I, and special teams, it shows up more than anywhere on the field because you just spread the field out. It's, it's you know, football in space more so. And, you know, I mean, that's what you see out of a lot of offenses, the spread offenses. They're trying to create more space. Well, that's what special teams is. And so you just find the one-on-one matchups. I know we win in those. I mean, Byron Murphy does a great job on his gunner to slow him down so Dante can get space and then he keeps playing and ends up springing him at the 10 yard line to get into the, the end zone. I mean, those kind of things are just like awesome to watch. Um, Jordan Miller does a great job too of really, you know, handling his gunner. I mean, those are, uh, there's not too much harder jobs than trying to slow down those fast guys with all that space and if they can do that, and give Dante a chance to get started, you know, he's usually going to do something pretty good. Dante only needs one more punt return touchdown to tie the all time NCAA mark in that. You obviously coached that personally. It, it, what, what, Here what, you what go with expectations, records, trying to do all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's. I worked with him for this is your fourth year now, but just where has he kind of incrementally improved in, in that regard? Just uh, understanding. Um, you know, when when he's got some space and um, you know finding the creases when they're there. Yeah, I, I'm much more into the uh, you know the subtle nuances of you know him catching balls that are tough to catch. There might even be a fair catch backed up in the red zone area. Um, I mean, other than Dante's um, you know touchdown. I really wasn't too happy with what was going on back there. I thought we let the ball hit the ground way too much. And so we got, we got work to do, including him. I think he could have got one that should not have hit the ground. And the other two guys, I don't know what they were doing at all. But if they do that, they're not going to get many more opportunities. So, 
you know, we got work to do, and it's all those subtle things. Everybody likes to flash plays, and that's great. I mean, they're game-changing plays, but there's a lot of subtleties in the, you know, the hidden game of special teams that creates yardage that you can see watching even other. I mean, I, I, I was watching some of those later night games and watching some special team stuff just going, you know, and a lot of it's on the punt returner in a lot of ways that people don't pay attention to. So, yeah, we got, we got work to do. What did you see, Chris, on when with the second offensive line, especially with regard to Savon and, and Sean getting touchdowns and kind of getting their careers going? Yeah, um, there was some good stuff. You know, it's it's hard when you uh, uh, full sail change and put all the, you know, those guys aren't used to working together and really getting those type of reps. But it was... It was uh, it was it was good to see. I mean, there wasn't um, there was some good stuff working together. We obviously had a couple things where it's like hitting the backfield, um, but not quite as much for that first time. Those guys all went in there, so it was good. And you know, sometimes you kind of look at individual performances in those lines and and see some things. And Luke Wattenberg getting going, and Henry Roberts, and some of those guys. It's really good to see that. And um, you know, we'll keep keep growing those guys. Ben, um, second week in a row, he's led the team in tackles. Is, is there something in his, I know you've talked a little bit about him already, but is there something that's really changed in his game from, you know, maybe this time last year? Um, I don't know if it's really changed. You know, he's always been a pretty active player. And, you know, our linebackers are all kind of uniquely different. You know, some of the guys are kind of... Um, you know, take on blocks, and all linebackers have to take on blocks sooner or later. But some guys are a little bit of curveball hitters where they can run around. They're really athletic, and they can run around blocks just as easy as they can take blocks on. And Ben's one of those guys that's really athletic and really fast, and I think he has really good instincts at that position. And so he's a hard guy to block, especially for those linemen in space. Um, you know, the game of football is going sideline to sideline, and that's kind of Ben's game as well. I mean, he can run those things down. I think he just kind of understands the defense and probably seen a lot of things now over the last two years where it's like, okay, he's, he can now attack things more than react to things. And he's played really good for the last two games. You're right. Really confident on the run, um, throwing off of the run, just scrambling. Is that something you've seen grow in his game or has that always been there? I think he does that pretty well. I mean, I think some of the things that we're kind of looking at with him is I think he could hang in down, hang in there a little bit more and uh, before he takes off and needs to. There was a couple times there. You know, it's that fine line because he actually does have confidence in his running abilities and scrambling and our receivers working with him. He does make plays there. But, uh, you know, it's that fine line between hanging in there and is everything covered up and now I need to do something. And uh, so we're still, still working on that. Having Ben in there as much as you guys have in the first two games, Chris, does that free up Keyshawn and his team to maybe do some other things that maybe we haven't seen since? I wouldn't say that. I think everybody's got their their job and their responsibility. And when one guy isn't doing their thing, getting freed up to freelance or something, it's going to come back to get you. And, uh, you know, sometimes you can see guys making some splash plays that run through and take chances and um, – and those are awesome to see, but then sometimes that can get you on the back end where you're taking a chance where you shouldn't take a chance and you need to really do your job. Um, but I go back to saying the same type of thing where, um, you know, you got to play the game of football. You can't be a robot out there. You do have to take chances and you do have to make plays. But So that's, that's the uniqueness and the fine line of like guys that, um, you know, when to take those chances and, you know, when to just do exactly what you're coached to do. How much, how much trust do you put in them as seniors or as experienced players to kind of be able to make that judgment call? I, I think that's, you know, hopefully the beauty of having experienced players. They've been there enough to make like really good split, split second fast decisions. That's where the experience comes in, you know, where a young guy might take that chance, make a play and think he can get away with it all, all the time, where an older guy will say, yeah, I got that one, but the, I, I understand I can't do that every time or I'm going to get caught on that. Did you notice how much faster the game was because they took five minutes out of half? <laughs> um, I did not notice that. Um, it was a fast game. I guess it was under three hours, and it still seemed kind of long to me.
was it like that? Wow, that was that big. It's just the, t- like, what, the TV timeouts, and then they have a TV timeout, and you kick off, and they say, okay, we're going to take another one here, and it's like a long wait. I mean, those are the things that are really, really painful. Halftime seemed great. You know, we went in, made our adjustment, you know, had our conversations, went right back on the field, so that didn't – I think that's not a problem at all. I think the only time it could maybe be a problem if a team has to go a little bit further to a locker room if it's not right in the stadium. Like there might be a couple places that take, you know, three, four minutes to get there. Might be a little bit tight. But when they're, in the, when they're right here on the field, it's pretty good. And with, with Tedford and Fresno, with you last year, do you need to, I don't know, worry about him knowing your secrets or what you guys are up to at all? Is that even a factor for... Is that just kind of the crap that we kind of talk about? Yeah. Um, you know, he's got Kirby Moore down there, too. Kirby probably knows more than him about, you know, our operations. Um, so those are some things we pay attention to, for sure. I mean, you watch their offense. It's very, very similar. Very, a lot of things that look a lot alike, you know. And, but that's one of the reasons that we liked him here, because, you know, we believe in the same thing. Um, fundamentally and philosophically on offense and so that's why it was a nice fit to have him here what did, what did Jeff bring what did he add last year when he was here you know just a lot of wisdom he's seen a lot of things he's been familiar with how we do things and um, you know just all the history that we have from way back when I mean it's just not as easy to bring somebody from the outside that's not familiar with you at all, whether it's a brand new coach at all. You'd be just surprised how long it takes to get guys on the same page, believing, knowing why things work. And, you know, from all the history in the past that we have with him, it was pretty easy. Have you filled that role? Kind of, I mean, I don't know if you have or not. So. No, not another, not what he did. Um, at some point, I mean, have to be a unique situation you know um, like I said there's a lot of good plays out there I mean we got a lot of plays we're not looking for more plays you know we're looking for things that like fit us and complement what we do and I know those that seems easier said than done but really when you're everybody's got their unique style and is used to you know are used to a no huddle go fast are used to a shift in motion I mean there's a really philosophically dramatically differences uh, in how guys do things and you can really just be wasting a lot of time talking about stuff you're not going to do. I think you still have that opinion though. Did you form um, a thought about whether it's something you really want to try to be proactive on or is it something like you said where it's you just have to find the right fit and it's more or less when it comes around? Yeah I think it's the right it, it is always the right fit to me in everything we do around here, whether we're recruiting kids, recruiting staff members, recruiting coaches, it is always about the right fit. And, you know, the consultant thing, um, you know, they're not going to be with you very long, a year or two. And if they're not familiar, it takes a, a flat out entire year to even figure out, you know, what guys are doing. And so... Never say never, and we're always eyes wide open, but it's not as easy, in my opinion, what, what we would be looking for. Chris, when a team like Fresno State plays an uh, incarnate word one week in Alabama, yeah. um, with, as someone who cares about college football, uh, do you think that's a good idea? Um, gosh, I mean, these, these, are, um, these are tough questions, you know. Um, that I, you know, I just don't have any influence in those those areas, so I haven't spent a bunch of time thinking it. I, we talked about scheduling a lot. We've talked about the importance of, you know, sometimes how those those games are important to to the, you know, FCS schools to pay bills and those type of things. Um, but I do think it's something that everybody needs to be on the same page about. And like I said, I think that's one of the frustrations about college football, in my opinion, right now. Nobody can get on the same page about almost anything. And, you know, because it's just, I look at the NFL and, you know, admire that situation when they got 32 teams and they're all, you know, on the same page. And we have, you know, 120 some teams plus all different levels of teams and we're making rules for us and their rules they want different things and it's it, it is complicated does it concern you 
you about, say, player safety when you get such uh, diverse levels of size, strength with different uh, classes of teams? I don't, I, I don't, uh, I haven't gone that far about the player safety thing. I don't really see that. But I think everybody likes competitive football. You know, I think that's what, you know, I, I know some of, like, I pay attention to some of the high schools, you know, what's going on around there, and there's certain leagues that are really nice and really competitive, and then you might, you know, it's the, you know, 4A and 3A. Well, there's some 3A teams that should be in the, playing these big, better teams, and it's like, you just want competitive balance. And I think, I think everybody's into that. You know, you just don't want the lopsided. I think coaches, fans, everybody, um, wants to have competitive football games. People who followed Prosser and knew Tom Moore knew that Kellen had some real natural coaching abilities. Can you shed some light a little bit about Kirby and what kind of coach you think he might be? Yeah, yeah I think Kirby's a really, you know, it's a special family and I think Kirby's, um, he's a lot like his brother. You know, both those guys are not, um, they're kind of soft-spoken guys that are really smart, really into football. Um, I mean, Kirby did a great job around here, obviously. Jeff Tedford saw him work with us for the year, and that's why he took him with him because he's just a smart, efficient worker. I mean, you ask him to do something, it is done and better than you thought it would be. And, you know, growing up from those guys could walk. I mean, they were at football practice forever. And I, I think all that matters. And if you develop a passion for it, and which they, they both have, um, you know, you can kind of see young guys do some good things. Um, but they've been around it for a long time. Yeah, he's still. We're still evaluating him. I mean, yesterday, um, still, still figuring out what his situation's going to be. So we'll get him in here today, and today's their day off. So I haven't seen him yet. Figure him out. Last thing about Dante and the punt returns. He he kind of expressed some surprise that he was kicked to. Like after the first game, he was somebody who actually kicked to him. Do you, do you anticipate adjustments here on what teams might do with him? Kicking to him in punt in punt situation. I think it's hard not to kick to a punt. You know, I mean, like I said, I, we had this conversation a little bit ago. But I mean, if you're just going to kick it out of bounds, that that's that's hard to do and still get some distance. Um, you know, I mean, you get a punter that can get some hang time, and that really helps some things. I mean, I think that's what guys are going to work on is get the ball up in the air and cover. Um, I think everybody's trying to move the ball around from all returners, you know, and, and then it just comes down to execution. Chris, have you guys had, have you and Tedford had recent conversations at all, whether just catching up or even about Alabama or any of the other? Not, not that at all. We didn't have one conversation about that. We had a conversation a month ago. He was worried about the escort, police escort getting over here because he doesn't really have one because the Seahawks and the dogs have them. And so... We had a conversation about that. <laughs> if that counts, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, we haven't really had much conversations. Like I said, I didn't even know we were playing those guys till he got the job, and everybody's saying take his playbook. And uh, you know, I'm saying, yeah, you know, chuckling until somebody told me we actually played them, and then I, I'm like, yeah, you better get his playbook. But I think by then it was too late. Just <laughs> watching some uh, some late night football. <laughs> Washington State game, perhaps, and any thoughts on how that one went? Good football game. I didn't see it all. I saw a lot, but I knew it would be a competitive game back and forth. Those are both really competitive programs, and um, yeah, I thought that was an interesting game, and you know, credit to both those guys battling. I mean, that's, I know, coming back like that, and both those guys end up kind of with their backup quarterbacks. I mean, it was, it was a unique, impressive um, I still haven't got a chance to study the tape, but um, those are the competitive games I think everybody likes to watch. So, Disley, Will Disley's game then, Saturday. Yeah. If Drew's whatever was with him. Talk about kind of his role and how yeah. he stepped up Saturday. Did it, I mean, obviously, I mean, you know, everybody notices catching passes and those type of things. But like I've said before, I think our tight ends are kind of unsung heroes around here because they do so much for us at the line of scrimmage. And, you know, even in the pass game, maybe, maybe they don't get the ball. Um, but with our shifts and our motions and all those type of things and um, – you know, Drew and, and Will kind of work off each other. They play different positions. And so for 
um, Drew to go down and then Will to step up, not miss a beat, can do it all. I mean, there's a lot on his plate, on those tight ends' plates to be able to do that. And much more so, I mean, it's just not easy as plug a guy in. I mean, that that position's as t complicated to us as, you know, our quarterback position or anything else that's kind of going on. With the run game after two games? Yeah, I mean, it was good last game. I mean, it's always, you know, that, that, that always takes a minute to get that thing going and because you got it, that's a that's a rhythm part of football for sure, and you have to run the ball a bunch to to get into a rhythm. And um, Fresno will present some challenges. They move their guys all over the place. They're not going to stay in one spot and let us have a size advantage and try to man. They're going to slant and twist and all that, and that's that's always challenging. So we'll have a challenge in the run game this week for sure. Always a, a part of the plan to get Jacob Kaiser involved, regardless. Yes, this game it was. You know, we kind of were looking at that, and like we said, those tight ends are valuable to us, and it's a really physical position. And it just, you know, to me, it was a matter of time where um, I do think that's a position you'd love to, you know, those true tight ends. I see we see Jacob is more of a little bit more of a true tight end. You'd love to be able to redshirt those guys just to because there's so much on their plate knowledge wise and then weight room wise and all that but he did come with us mid-year so that kind of that really helped things but before going into the game we were planning on playing him anyways Brian Pitt is a, a, a guy who could be a gadget play guy you get him in space and let him do what he can or do you see him going between the tackles quite a bit his freshman year yeah I think he can do it all I think you know um, you know it's it's on us as coaches to try to figure out ways to, to get him the ball. And, um, you know, I think that's one of the, the good um, problems that we have now on offense right now is we, we got some guys that are good with the ball in their hands, the running backs and a couple of the wide receivers. And, you know, Chico's a little bit like, like him. And so we got to find creative ways to uh, get our playmakers the ball and, and get – Savon used to college football and the speed of the game and the hitting of the game and all those things. And so we'll just, I thought it was good that, you know, he, he got his feet wet real, real nice this game. And so it'd be nice to keep progressing that. Any shuffles during film review rewatching <laughs> Trey Adams' run? <laughs> he actually looked a little better on the tape, you know, <laughs> than, uh, than I remembered it. So it, wasn't, it was pretty good. He was really proud, though. I think he put it on Jonathan Smith for calling the play too far away from then, so we hadn't practiced it that far. And the endurance factor set in when we got outside of 20 yards, so it probably wasn't fair to him, but he looked pretty good. Chris, Jake had, I think it was a 17-yard scramble going to your right. You guys are up 35-7, and he's taken off and trying to juke people with a big lead. At that point in the game, would you rather just kind of see him go down? <laughs> I don't think you can play the game like that. I think you're playing, the score is always zero to zero in terms of player's mind. You got to go play how you think. And if you're thinking, now I would say this, I mean, I think when our quarterbacks runs, we, we do want them to get what they can get and either get out of bounds or go down. I mean, the name of the game is to not get that guy hit. And if he's going to take off, we want him to be really smart. But I think reps are all the same. If you're in, you're playing full speed and play smart football. Brian, a guy at the point where maybe he's ready for more of an expanded role too. Obviously. I mean, we're trying to expand all these young guys' roles. It's just, you know, it's easier said than done. I mean, there just really is a lot at that tight end position. I mean, you see him out at wide receiver, and now he's in the line of scrimmage, and there's five different looks. He could be blocking something, and so it's it's slow, steady progress is what we hope with all those guys. Your linebackers were all uniquely different. Do you see the same sort of thing at the tight end position with guys having success? Absolutely. We always think of that with the tight ends. I mean, we'd love that six foot five, 250, 55 pound guy that can run like a receiver. Those guys are just hard to find. And so, what we do is kind of always mix and match and play to their strengths and use a lot of guys at that position. Kind of on the topic of young guys, uh, what do you think, I guess, getting to see some like extended action for guys like Elijah and Brandon McKinney and all those guys putting together, Keith Taylor? Well, you know, we're, it's really important. I mean, if we're going to play these, these uh, young guys, these freshmen, and um, we're planning on those guys being factors sooner than, you know, sooner than later. And so 
it is good to get them in and get them significant reps. Um, I mean, the reason we're playing them is we think we're going to need them, and, and uh, it may not appear like right now today we have to have the, but we know how this goes, and we will have to have those guys. And even getting them on some special teams where no one really pays attention to, we got them on that, and there were some really good plays that those guys made. And so it was good. This was a good game to, you know, take the next step with a lot of those guys in terms of the amount of reps they got. Is it part of your mindset on special teams? Because it looks like there's a number of guys that have kind of made their some of their, their, their money on special teams as big hitters, whether it's Azeem or Keyshawn or Zeke and now Taylor Rapp had a couple of big hits. Mm-hmm. Is, it, is that part of the mindset you think that these guys need to have, as, as, especially in the kickoff? We, um, I mean, we tell these guys for real that we only play our best players. And it doesn't matter if it's offense, defense, or special. We're not putting you out there unless we think you can be the best player at the L4 on the kickoff team. I mean, you see Keyshawn out there. You see Azeem out there. You see JoJo McIntosh out there. I mean, these guys take pride. They want on those teams. That's what the good teams do is they play their best players. Now, if one of our young guys has a limited role and he can study more tape and take more pride and beat out one of these guys that's been around, we'll play him there. But we're not playing anybody for charity reps on anything. We'll play charity reps. It's going to be on offense and defense, not special teams. And that's the mindset. And that's why I think you see those guys. So if you see a young guy on there, we think he's going to be is or going to be rapidly our best player on that unit. Yeah, it was nice to get him on the field. You can see he's got a knack. He's got quick feet. He makes things happen. I think he, well, we've been saying all along, he's got instincts. He finds space, and it's nice to see him get a couple runs in there. This is just an assumption. Miles and LeVon and Sal, if there's not enough carries for... You know, this is a long season, and this is a long career, you know, and even if you play a young guy, and I know he's ready to play redshirted, but even you play a true freshman that may not get all these... Uh, starter reps but gets you know the game planning reps the practice reps does get some reps in games that guy is much different player year two than the guy that redshirted and so if a guy's ready to play and can help us we like to go that direction and so um, that's how we think about all that stuff you might not see a guy in there but they are growing and gaining more than if they're just on a scout team and we like that thanks okay